Oh, man, I just got to take a deep breath sometimes. What has this game, what has the sport of college football come to? The college football season is yet to start, and things are already so, and I mean so weird. So weird, and matter of fact, I didn't even plan on making this video tonight, but some things happened today, and I was like, yeah, we gotta talk about it. The video I did have planned for tonight, we're gonna push it back until tomorrow. Hope you guys don't mind. For now, at least, we gotta talk about what's going on, and I really wanna know what you guys think about this down below. And it's not just one thing that's weird to me, it's multiple different things, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. For example, the past couple of days, Missouri's head coach and Lane Kiffin head coach of Ole Miss, they've been speaking up about the conference realignment and how it's bad for the student athletes. We're going to talk all about that, but also news came out today that the ACC, they're looking to add new teams, and that's all fine and dandy, but it's the teams they're looking to add that has everybody scratching their heads. It's just very, and I mean very odd. And there's some more things we're going to talk about, but at this point in time with all the realignment going on, all these schools wanting money, all these conferences wanting money, it feels like college football, and I hate to say this because I love this sport so much, it's turning into the NFL JV pretty much, or the NFL G League. I'm just going to come out and say it. College football is a professional sport now. I'll break that down as to why I believe that. And let me know in the comment section if you agree with me. As always, if you're new to the channel and you like college football content, consider joining our amazing community. All right, Matt, blah, blah, shit. Oh, wait, if you don't want to join, yeah, that's cool too. All right, Matt, blah, blah, shit. Crap, oh, no, 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 no. Let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, I don't know if some of you saw this, I'm sure a lot of you did, it was going viral, everybody's talking about it, where Missouri's head football coach, Eli Dringowitz, he was talking about, oh, you know, this is terrible, what about the student athletes, what about their mental health, this is too much traveling for baseball, softball, and all that stuff. Now, you're going to remember, a couple of days ago, I actually went on a rant and tangent, I'll pop it up right here, where I was talking about how these softball players were saying, oh, this isn't fair for the softball team, and yada, 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 yada. They, they, were, they, they were pretty much just crying, and I was going off on them. But the difference with this is, and the reason I was going off on the softball girls, is because they were tweeting, and I, maybe it's just the way they worded it, but they had a very entitlement type of attitude. Many of those softball players, and you can go watch the video for yourself, they were tweeting out stuff like, oh, well, I went to this school so my parents could come to see me play, and I went to this school because it was closer to my hometown. And in that video, I stated, and this is why I have no sympathy for them whatsoever, okay, you don't like it, enter the transfer portal. That's why we put the portal into place. If you don't want to play for one of these former Pac-12 schools like Oregon anymore, you can enter the portal. Simple. But I digress, and I don't even want to get into that because I can already feel myself going on a rant and tangent. Getting back on track here with Eli Drinkwitz, here's what he stated or one of the things I'm going to address. I'm not going to read off all of it because it's too long and boring, but he did address that, oh, what about the flights going to the airport back and forth? What about them going to morning classes? How's that going to take a toll on them? And then he also stated, I don't worry at all about the game. The game is going to be strong. Football is going to be fine. But did we consider the people that we are entrusted with? Did we consider the student athlete? And his entire message summed up was, oh, this is too much traveling. It's too much for these players. It's going to take a toll on them, blah, 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 blah. And Lane Kiffin, as you can see right here, he even wound up speaking up about this, saying the same thing. With all that information I've presented to you, I believe that I have a great perspective on this situation because I can relate to it. As a kid growing up, and I'm sure either A, many of you did this, or B, you're currently doing this, I played travel baseball and AAU basketball. My entire life, from the age of six years old up until the end of high school, was nonstop sports. And although I love basketball way more than baseball, at the age of seven to, it was probably 13 or 14, I was traveling the country every single day for travel baseball. And back in my day, this was before everybody played travel baseball. Now, AAU and travel baseball, it's a cash grab. It's all about money. Back when I was growing up, and I sound like an old head here, only the elite of elite played travel baseball. My point is where I'm trying to go with this. From the age of 7 to 14 years old, all I knew was from Thursday to Monday, I was going to be on the road. I was going to be playing baseball. We're going to be driving in the car 8 to 12 hours. I was going to check out of school early Thursday morning. We're going to travel in the car 8 to 10 hours and play baseball all the way up until Sunday or Monday. Get back in the car on Sunday if we lost early, either Sunday morning. If we won it all, we'd stay till Sunday night and make the drive home home and get home sometime in the Monday morning. I grew up in Alabama and very rarely did we even play a tournament in Alabama. I'll put it this way, I remember thinking it was a rare occasion for us to only travel three hours on a weekend. More times than not, we're going to Louisiana, Texas, 
Kentucky a lot of times went to Tennessee, Georgia a lot. That's a great baseball state. And we went to Florida once every three to four weeks. And I'm going to tell you this much, and this is exactly how it is and every athlete can relate. If you didn't love the game or you don't love the game, it's miserable. You're going to hate every single second of it, and it is going to take a toll on your mental health. But, and I have a big but, if you do love the game, it's not going to be bad whatsoever. You're going to love every second of it. You're going to love the travel. You're going to love the road trip with your bros and all of that. That was the best part about playing travel, baseball, and AU basketball. Just hanging out with the bros in the hotel room, going to the swimming pool. Man, the memories just flowing back into my head. It was awesome, man. I remember thinking, man, I didn't even have a normal childhood, but I want to change anything about it. I love playing sports 24-7. And when I say have a normal childhood, I just mean have a summer off because I remember thinking, dude, I never had one summer off growing up. There was no such thing as, oh, a vacation. No, I was always playing sports. So applying what I just said to these collegiate athletes, and I was being recruited out of high school, and I've talked to these collegiate athletes, it's the same principle. If you don't love the game, it's going to get exposed at the collegiate level, trust me. And this is why a lot of people don't even play college basketball, baseball, or football because it becomes a job. It's a business. People don't understand how much you have to love the game to play at the next level. The work these football players, baseball players, basketball players, all these athletes put in, it's insane. And to go on top of that, they got to go to school. If you don't love the game, I don't care if you're playing in Missouri for all 12 of your regular season games, that season's going to be miserable. However, on the flip side, if you do love the game, it doesn't matter if you're traveling to Europe for all 12 of your regular season games, it's going to be the best time of your life. Sports at the collegiate level become a job. It's no longer fun like it was when you were a kid growing up playing that sport. If you don't know the difference in them, look it up. I don't have sympathy for any of these collegiate athletes that got to travel from Oregon to the Big Ten for any of their games, but I do have empathy. There's a difference. If you don't know it, look it up. I don't feel bad for them. If you don't want to play, then quit. If it's too much for you, quit. Nobody's forcing you to play. Sports are a privilege. You really want me to feel bad for you when you're going to take a flight with all your buddies to an away game? You got free meals and all that nice stuff? No, I can't feel bad for you. There's no sympathy whatsoever, at least not for me. There's just no in-betweens. I'm sorry, I can't agree with this Missouri head coach on this. I can't. That's where I stand on that. I do apologize. I spent a little too much time talking on that, more time than I wanted to, but it happens. Moving along here to our next topic and really what we need to get into, we got some news about the ACC and more realignment stuff. As we all know, the ACC is also about to crumble like a cookie. Florida State, the Cinnamon Rose, and Clemson, they won't out, but they're in a weird position because they can't leave because of the grant of rights. Technically, they can leave, but they'd have to pay $300 million. And I don't care who you are, that's not exactly a smart thing to do. So for now, it looks like they're going to stay put, but the ACC understanding, hey, Clemson and Cinnamon Rolls, they're going to try to dart at any moment now. We need to look at some other teams. And that's exactly what they've been doing. And news came out today that they're looking at adding, they are considering adding California and Stanford. Oh, brother. Yep, you heard me correctly. I'm going to say it again. California and Stanford. Immediately, this jumps off the board at me because California and Stanford are what, 3,000 miles away? They're on the West Coast. Oh, man, I just got to take a deep breath sometimes. What has this game, what has the sport of college football come to? And I get it, everybody's going to say, well, Matt, the Big Ten added Oregon, Washington, UCLA, and USC. What's the difference? And there's not really a big difference, but for some odd reason, and maybe it's just me, I think UCLA, USC, Oregon, Washington, they kind of fit into the Big Ten. I know there's a region difference, but when I think of the ACC, I just specifically think about, okay, that's on the East Coast. And it's just going to be so hard for me to even picture Stanford and California in the ACC. It doesn't make sense. And I'm glad I'm not the only one who thinks this way because somebody on TV said, quote unquote, does not make sense to me. So at least I'm not alone from that standpoint. And check out what this person had to say. Or not what this person had to say, but in an article it was stated that California and Stanford are elite academic schools and that's why the ACC wants them. I didn't really think about it from that standpoint, but when I read that in an article, I was like, uh. Oh. That does make a little more sense. Because when you think about it, I don't know if they're known for this, but I know the ACC does have a lot of good academic schools like Duke. I wouldn't really say Miami and Florida State and 
Clemson are academic powerhouses. Maybe they are, but I don't think they are. But I do know this, Stanford is definitely up there with the Dukes of this world. Maybe they're even higher up, I don't know. I don't know anything about academics, so if you do, fill us in in the comment section. But still, even with the academic argument, that doesn't even matter. This is all a football decision. This has nothing to do with basketball, this is all football, because football makes all the money. And I don't know, man, I just have an easier time processing Oregon, Washington, UCLA, and USC going to the Big Ten than California and Stanford going to the ACC. Because to me, what I think we need to do is just let's get this over with, speed up the process, ACC needs to fall apart, the Pac-4 needs to fall apart, and you got three conferences, the Big 12, SEC, and Big 10. Because to me, at least, that's why things are getting a little wishy-washy, the Pac-12 or really the Pac-4 is just going to bring in a bunch of group of five schools and the same thing for the ACC in a few years. I just feel like we might as well have this big merger and have either two mega conferences, the Big 10 and the SEC, or three great conferences in the SEC, Big 10, and the Big 12. That's my take on the situation because think about it. Isn't it called the ACC? It stands for the Atlantic Coastal Conference, right? Well, what sense does that make to be your name when you got two teams out west? Zero to me, and it'd be the same thing if the Southeastern Conference added California and Stanford. You gotta change the name, don't you? Because you're no longer the Southeastern Conference. Diverting back to this, though, I'm standing 10 toes down on this statement. I love this for college football, but at the same time, I can still admit it's weird. It's going to take some time for me at least to see California and Florida State playing and going, yep, we got an ACC matchup on our hands. Like, what? Come on, man. What are we doing? I don't know, man. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talk about down below. But, uh,